currently getting ready for a multi-day event shoot that I have tomorrow and I pretty much got hired because of my gear my gear that I have I'm working with a production company on this multi-day event and they're flying into Orlando and they don't want to bring all their filmmaking gear they don't want to bring lights they don't want to bring stands they want to find a local videographer in the Orlando area who has a good size kit and I don't have the biggest kit but I have a basic kit for any basic interview and any event coverage work that I typically do so I'm gonna be bringing everything from the FX6 which you guys already know I have um I'm gonna bring the nan light and the amran in this one the aperture 300d i like to bring the easy rig on all my multi-day event jobs i don't really bring it sometimes on single day event jobs because i just don't need it they're not long enough but this shoe is going to be long hours so definitely bring the easy rig um tripod stand i might bring this amran tube light down there and just my light stand call time is 6 a.m so i'm gonna pack all this tonight everything is already charged and i'll pick up from there and this is it everything fits nicely into the old school 2008 honda accord a lot of you guys may not know but i'm really into cars especially sport cars and i owned a ton of different sport cars my last car was a bmw <laughs> Before that, I had a Lexus IS 350, then I had a Focus ST, and then I had a Genesis Coupe. I had a lot of different cars. I'll show them on the screen. But the two cars that I'm really in the market, I've been looking at, is either a 2018 and up Audi S5 Sportback, because that is a hatchback. And for my filmmaking production jobs, it would give me more room. Um, because it is a hatchback and my cousin has an Audi S4 and I've been in his I did a whole video for him I'll post that on the screen and being in that car I really enjoyed it but I wanted the S5 because it's a hatchback it's a bigger body same engine same interior same everything as the S4 it's just a hatchback or I'm thinking about getting a G82 M4 two-door car it's a lot smaller that car is running for like 70 grand so I'm not sure if I want to pay 70 grand for a g82 the audi is going for around 40 grand if i get the g82 i'm probably gonna put like maybe 10,000 down i don't need to put that much down but i'm probably gonna put like 10,000 down if i get the audi i'm gonna put like 5,000 down so i don't know and this is where i'm going to be staying at for the next three nights excited there is a whole lot of pros and cons when it comes to working multi-day corporate events. Now, corporate events are a whole lot different than just a regular typical event. Pros of corporate events are everything is usually complimentary. Cons are nothing goes according to plan. No one has any good communication and scheduling just always falls behind. Always the most difficult part that I have when it comes to this wagon is figuring out how to load the gear into the wagon. That's why I'm really wanting a film cart instead of this because when all this goes into it, it gets really heavy and it gets hard to move. So yeah, that's, that's the struggles. All right, this is what I'm rocking with. Definitely getting a cart because I'm tired of finagling this together. I still have to pull that now, which is pretty heavy. So yeah, let's just get to it. Like I previously mentioned, working corporate events, they're usually high stress environments. So find it best to usually just stay calm and relax. That's typically how I am most of the time. And I don't really let it get to me enough. And clients see that. They see how calm and relaxed I can be. Bro, you gotta be kidding me. I have to walk. Oh my gosh, I need a car. So I'm walking back to the car now because I forgot the laptop. Um, I was kind of nervous about this whole editing situation. They're editors themselves, so I'm assuming they're just gonna edit it because I really don't want to edit it. Like I'm fine with giving them my laptop and having them go edit by themselves. But if you guys don't know, I have a 2012 MacBook Pro. It's slow. It doesn't really handle 4K files good and they want to film this entire project in 4K. So every time I import 4K files on the MacBook, it always starts lagging, it always starts skipping frames, and it doesn't work good. So I offer them, because I'm about 40 minutes away from this hotel, I offer them um, to go back to the house and grab my M2. They just need a monitor and just edit off of the monitor and go that route. And they said it's not a big of a deal. They're gonna, they're gonna try to edit on my laptop. If it doesn't work, then they're not really stressing about that. 
another thing that I mentioned to them was I brought a um, SSD card because I knew the MacBook isn't the greatest. It doesn't have a lot of storage on it and 4K files are large. So when I told him that I brought a SSD to store the files on there just in case, he was like super excited. He was like, man, I like how you think. You're always thinking ahead. It's always good. I didn't have to bring the SSD, but I brought it because I knew that my computer wasn't going to really work good. And I told him, I was like, hey man, I'm here just to make your life easier, dude. So I wanna make the client happy. I'm gonna try to record as much B-roll as I can. It's gonna be hard because I think we're gonna be doing a lot of man on the street interviews. And if you don't know what that is, it's just someone walking around with a stick mic and I'm following them and we're recording live interviews on the spot. So it's gonna be really hard for me to try to be able to record that. And then we have a booth where we're gonna do a lot of just sit down interviews. So this is the setup. So yeah, this is the setup. We're running my man light right here. There's gonna be a backlight. We're gonna boom over a tube light, but I forgot the sandbag, so I gotta run and grab that. I'm running my FX6 right here on the easy rig. They're running um, Sony cameras as well. I believe that's the FS right there. They have a Ronin gimbal. Um, the Aperture 300D is gonna be the key light. We're gonna place them right here and we're gonna have that in the background because they want that. They wanna see crowds. Um, this is their tripod. He's running a FS right here on a shoulder rig. Looks pretty cool. Um, the Ronin gimbal, I don't know if I mentioned that. But the biggest issue we have, they only give us one plug and we need more because we have a lot of lights. We have a lot of gear. We have this cool looking shoulder rig camera right here. Um, yeah, so, and um, yeah, look at this FS though. Look at this Sony camera. Looks really good on the shoulder rig. Kind of looks like a David Moorfield setup. <laughs> looks really, really good. Small HD monitor. Um, yeah. I had to run back to the car again because I forgot the sandbag. And when I got everything unloaded and I was going into the building, I looked at the sandbag and I was like, eh, I'm not gonna need it, whatever. And I almost didn't even bring the tube light and the client just asked me, he was like, hey, um, if you brought the tube light, I wanna use that as a hair light. And this morning I was debating, I was like, eh, I'm not gonna bring the tube light. I don't think I'm gonna need it. I'm already bringing three lights. I don't need to bring all these lights. But luckily I brought it. And now I'm getting the sandbag. I just finished setting up the um, hair light but it is a little wobbly. I threw the sandbag on there. I don't know why they want this chair here because we're only gonna be interviewing one at a time. So I'm gonna see if I can remove this chair, get this like closer so I don't have to extend it as far because it is a little wobbly. If I can't do that, then I'm just going to throw probably my tripod. We're not using that. They brought their own tripods. I'm probably just gonna throw my tripod on the leg just to add a little bit more weight so it's not so wobbly. I don't like that, that's not safe. And I just don't like that. So um, yeah, it's a really small room. We don't have much to work with. They want this as a backlight, but where? Where is it gonna be a backlight at? Um, I'm going to have to improvise. Like I said, I'm just gonna try to have to move this. We don't even have enough depth for up against this uh, glass window right here. So I can't even really use it as a backlight. So I'm not necessarily sure what their vision is yet for that. They're grabbing B-roll. Um, they left one of the Sony cameras here and I'm going to be on the easy rig. Like I mentioned, oh, this is the stick mic that we're going to be using. Um, yeah, I guess I'm going to pick it up when I start doing stuff, I guess. So we are really having a lot of issues when it comes to lighting. The lighting keeps changing and obviously it's not the best. We keep having issues with these two key lights reflecting, as you can see right there, off the windows. So the best solution we found was to just raise the key light a little bit higher. Um, this one is not in frame and it's not reflecting. You don't really see it on camera, but this is how the image is looking. And now the biggest issue we're having is because the key light is so high, it's casting raccoon eyes on the subject and we don't want that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my Amaran 60D. I'm gonna put the reflector on it and now I'm going to um, put some diffusion that we have somewhere in this mess. I'm gonna tape some diffusion onto the reflector and use that to blast at the subject's face so it's not too bright and they're not like hurting their eyes and it's gonna diffuse the light so it's softer because if you don't, it just, it's just really harsh. It doesn't look good. So yeah, we're spending a lot of time figuring out how to like this interview, which is pretty crazy. Um, but yeah, we just gotta make it work. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I bought it on Amazon for like $10, I think. It just allows you to tilt the Amaran 60D. So I'm gonna place it on here like this and it's gonna allow me to, um, just tilt like over on one. 
Oh man, difficulties. Let's do a tilt like this. So, yeah. Probably can't hear me, but um, this battery's at 62%. The other one is charging at 27. So it's been a long day, a lot of interviews. I did a lot of men on the street interviews. So now I'm gonna take a lunch break because my back hurts, I'm hungry, and I'm honestly tired. So let me put this away so I can go get some food because here's the Ronin. I'm done, <laughs> I need some food. And this is my room for the next two nights. I gotta charge these lavaliers up and then um, they wanna meet for dinner. Oh, that's broken. Wanna meet for dinner at eight o'clock. I really just don't feel like, how do you open this curtain, bro? Man, what does this door go to? I don't even know, should I open it? I'm not gonna open it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it. Oh, another door. All right, cool. That works out, I guess. This is the view. It looks pretty nice. I mean, Orlando Exhorts, what do you expect? Yeah. I'm gonna pick it up and I'll talk to you guys in a minute. I know people can say corporate work is very boring, I do agree some of the jobs I get, especially these event conferences, they definitely can be boring. And I honestly can't really remember anything that I even learned from these corporate events, from these speakers that were talking, but it does pay the bills. It does pay very well. So, I mean, I think that's kind of the trade off. I can either do something that's really, really boring, but I get paid a whole lot, or I can find something that I'm probably passionate about a little bit more, but it probably not going to pay me as much depending on what it is that I'm doing.